day. Today is day 21 and we're going to be talking about starting up a business. Um, before we get started, I am going to say today's Bible verse. Finally, brothers and sister, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, um, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4 and 8. I'll read out the NIV. Um, starting a business. Um, I started my business Okay, I want to say I started the business in 2016 under black oasis then i moved to chicago um where sorry you guys i left my iron on because i was ironing because i'm been sewing all day so let me turn that off real quick Okay, I'm back. So I moved to Chicago in like 2017 um, where I met someone. Uh, we would stay in for a little bit. But in the process um, of us dating, um, we together revised the name of my clothing line um because he was saying that the black oasis kind of sound like a boutique name and from what i was telling him where i want to be at with my fashion he was saying i needed a another name to you know match where i wanted to be and he was like all the greats they use their name so that's where Nikki Young was born. Um, Nikki is my family childhood nickname. And Young is my last name. Um, of course, I spell it Y-O-U-N-G. But I felt like that would that would have been too long to do Nikki Young like that. So I looked on Google to find shorter ways to spell it and that's why I came up with the Y-U-G. Um, trying to start a business has been really tough. In some days, I really do feel like giving up because I feel like I'm sinking so much money into this and I'm not seeing any type of like real return um it's also it's also been hard trying to um know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong i kind of i'm kind of taking every day as a uh Learn as you go. Um, Cause coming from a public school, a black public school, you know, they don't really teach you how to be a business owner. I've heard from so many black kids that had had the opportunity to go to a better school, like a white school, the lesson, the, the, you know,
you know, what they teach the kids there is so much better than what, you know, we learning at our, our schools. Like, <laughs> I think my senior year, they took homemade, home mech away. And I was looking so forward to that class because I knew I was going to be sewing and making stuff in there. Little did I know that's that was my passion. But <laughs> as soon as I took that class, they got rid of it. And I was like so mad. They put me back in gym. I had gym like, I feel like I had gym my whole four years. That was like my only elective <laughs> that I had all four years was gym. And I was just like, dang, like, I don't get to take something else. It's like they brainwashing the black kids to thinking you're only good enough to do sports and basically just do sports like that's the that's your only way to make it out is to do sports which maybe for some people it is but it's not the case for everybody everybody don't want to do sports me <laughs> i did sports but the only sport that i really enjoyed doing was softball and i didn't realize i i like softball to my 12th grade year. I wish I would have realized how much I liked it like freshman year. Because I would have did that instead of basketball and track. But, you know, maybe I could have got a scholarship or something to help me with school. <laughs> but it wouldn't have helped me anyways because I ended up going to an art school. So, you know, it's like the black schools, they brainwash you into thinking sports is your only outlet. And that is like your strike one against you. No, it's your strike two because your strike one is that you're black. And then your strike two is your education is not up to par. So it's like... They teach you all this unnecessary stuff that you don't use. And then the stuff that you need, like your economics and learning about credit and all that stuff like that. We had economics, but the football coach was teaching us our economics. It's not like if you had somebody that was really in that field, somebody who went to school for that teaching the kids that. I had a gym, I had a coach teaching me my computer class. <laughs> so it's like, one, we black, two, our education ain't crap. And then, then we just thrown out here to try to figure it out. And so, some figure it out and then some they get frustrated and mess up and get themselves in predicaments that you can't recover from, especially when you're black. And if you do, it's going to be really, really, really hard. Like, extremely hard. It's already hard, but it's going to be extremely hard to recover from. You got to have people all in the right places. And you got to be really good at whatever it is that you are doing for it to not really like phase you as much um but it's been tough because i've been having to teach myself well not teach myself because i'm in school i go i attend post university i do online classes two classes per term. I think it's like six terms in a year. So I do two classes per term. Um, this is my last year and then I have my bachelor's degree in business administration. Um, which then after that, after I'm finished with that, I want to go back to school 
and get my fashion degree because I am a self-taught designer. So I never went to school for it. So everything that I have learned, I've learned through, um, like my aunt taught me the basics, how to read a pattern, how to, you know, use my sewing machine. And then from there, um, the rest of the stuff I wanted to learn, I watched YouTube or I learned from a sewing job that I got by a miracle. <laughs> So between those two, three, those three things, that's how I learned how to sew. Um, I still got a lot I want to learn, um, but once I finish my degree, I will go back and perfect my craft. Starting a business, it's been hard because. You're not, as a black person, you're not taught to run a business. You're taught to either work for somebody or, or be an athlete. Those are like, it, that's what it seems like your only two options are. To be an athlete or to work for somebody for the rest of your life. And neither one of those are an option for me i'm i'm about too old i'm too old <laughs> to be trying to be an athlete plus my body all banged up so it's no good to you know try to do that anyways um two i'm a single mother so trying to work for somebody means never seeing my daughter and I want to raise my daughter for myself. You know, I want to instill the stuff that I've learned, my morals and stuff into her. I don't want other people raising her and instilling their beliefs into her. And then she grow up. I miss, miss growing up, seeing her grow up, missing birthdays and stuff like that. And, and it's like, to take care of a kid by yourself, you're basically, you got to work either two jobs or one job where you gone all the time, you know, and it's like you taking care of them, but not really. You just financially taking care of them, but somebody else is raising them. And I want to raise her for myself and be able to financially take care of her. Um, so that's why I started my business. Um, since I wasn't taught about credit, my credit was shot, but it's not because I just had a lot of stuff on my credit. It's because it, it's like, between of not having a lot of stuff on your credit and a little bit of stuff that I did have, you know, when you're in between jobs or something like that, it kind of, you know, mess you up because you can't make payments. So that's why I was at. So my credit wasn't good enough to like, you know, go out here and get a business loan like some people do. And you know, have the funds to start their business up. I didn't have that. I don't even, to tell you the truth, I don't even know how to write a business plan. But I bet you somebody that might have went to a white school know how to write a business plan. I don't know if it's because I, I was never good. I can tell y'all, English, my English courses, never been my strong suit. <laughs> Like, every class I ever took has, I have barely passed, like, C's. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. Like, my strong suit is math. I can get an A in math and sleep through the whole, whole course. Math is my strong suit. English, no. It's like, it's, it's too much going on. You got the past tense, the present tense, and you got, you got to remember all these 
it's just too much to remember and I feel like yeah it's just too much <laughs> so I don't know how to write a business plan to be honest so that's another problem even if you know my credit being bad if I knew how to write a strong business plan maybe they still would consider it so since I don't know how to write a business plan I've been working on my credit trying to fix it and build it it's been growing I've been paying off bills and um, I've taken out some loans and paid them off so that way the the loan amount that I get keep increasing and it reflects on my credit I also now have two credit cards I make sure I try to stay below the 30 percent which I didn't know until I got a credit card that you supposed to stay that you only supposed to use 30 percent of it if you use more than that it reflects badly on your credit I thought just having a credit card as long as you paid it off before you know the bill that that's all that matter but no you gotta stay below the 30 percent y'all might think I'm slow but if you never taught these things how can you know I don't feel like I'm a slow person but I'm just saying if you never taught these things how can you know my mom she got sick when I was young so it's not like I really had a parent to teach me these things because my mom she had a stroke so it's like she had to learn how to read and write and all that stuff all over again so it's like she didn't really talk too much because when she couldn't think of what she was trying to say it would aggravate her and you know, I'm sorry. Every time I think about my mom, I just be about to start crying because I really miss her. But so me and my mom, we never really talked about life and how to be an adult and all that stuff. Um, and my dad wasn't around. So, whew, sorry. Um, I kind of had to just learn this stuff for myself. Um, the last dude I dated, he had excellent credit. When I say he had the white people credit, he had the white people credit. <laughs> so he taught me a lot about how to boost my credit. And I've been implementing that ever since then. Um, he also taught me a little stuff about writing papers and that has really been helping me because <laughs> I was horrible at writing papers but ever since he taught me that little trick I get an A on my papers all the time and I'm a procrastinator so I wait to the day of that my paper is due but I still get an A. <laughs> thank God, thank God for him because he has helped me improve a little bit. Um, mm, drinking my smart water leader. This is my second one for the day. But yeah, so I had to kind of just raise myself. I had no dad. My mama was always sick, so I had to raise myself. And all I've ever done was work for somebody. I never thought about working for myself until I had my child and then I was like I don't ever get to see her I want to be around her like I don't want to be tired like coming from work so tired that she just want to spend time with me but all I'm doing is sleeping because I'm just so tired you know um, but even with this business, it's, it's, it's kind of sometimes hard to do the balance because it's like I need to sew to be able to show people what I can do, 
but she still wants me to <laughs> interact with her at the same time. I'm homeschooling her. I'm doing my own schooling. So I'm trying to run a business and be mom and be a teacher all in one day. It gets very draining some days. Some days I just want to sleep all day. But I know I can't. Because <laughs> I won't get nowhere if I just sleep all day. So I do be tired trying to do all that stuff in one day. When you said my eyes want to roll around, my eyes want to be rolled around. So with my credit being shot and really not having no funds to start up because the money I was getting from work, I was basically just, it was just enough to live, to pay my bills, to make sure my daughter had clothes and whatever she need, feed her, you know, and then, you know, keep going like that every month. So what I started doing 2018, what I did was I took my refund um, check and I legitimized my business and bought some equipment to help me start, um, you know, some better equipment, a better sewing machine, one that was made for, you know, doing more sewing it's not an industrial sewing machine but it is a heavy duty one that's my next goal goal to get an industrial sewing machine but that one is a pretty penny so you know <laughs> that one gotta wait um but i did get me a serger i got me a heavy duty sewing machine um i legitimized my business um Paid off some bills so my credit could go up. Um, and then I did the same thing um, this year. I bought some more equipment. I bought this cutter. I'm not sure if I'm using it right, but I'm not sure if I like it. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but... You can buy these little vinyl sheets and it, it'll cut it out. And then you can iron it on, whatever you want to iron it on. Um, it's cool. Maybe I just need to, I need to do more research on it. I really want this heat press machine that I saw. That's a that's another little pretty, pretty penny check. So that way I could like print different designs and stuff on jackets or bags that I make and stuff like that. Um, so that's how I've been trying to grow my business with the lack of ed education on being a business owner and credit and all that stuff. Um, and the lack of funds, I've just been using my refund check every year is taking me longer than it would somebody that had the education background that knew, you know, knew more about credit and stuff like that. But it's okay. Um, because it's okay that it's taking me a little longer to prepare. Um, because maybe I wasn't ready as I thought I was. Um, I, I have been trying to overcome my procrastination and my depression, which makes me sleep a lot. So, you know, if I would have been more prepared, I don't, you know, if I had those tools... To already have my business up and running. Who knows if I would have been able to keep up. So. 
you know, I know those things about myself. And I am working to improve it. I also know that my communication skills suck. So I'm also working on that as well. And and these videos have been helping with that. Um, always been terrified to talk in front of people. I was a mute all through school. So like I never really talked to people not unless they talked to me first. That was <laughs> my whole little motto through life. Like, I don't talk to nobody unless they talk to me first. Because then I know they want to talk to me. Because for some reason, when I did go to talk to people, they act like they didn't hear me. Like, I don't know if I was talking too low or something, but people will always ignore me like they didn't hear me. Or folks had attitudes like I was just saying something out the way to them which was never the case so i just never talked to nobody unless they talked to me because then i knew they wanted to talk to me <laughs> and even then sometimes when people go to talk to me and when i respond it's like they looking off some other way they're not really hearing what i'm saying and it's just like why why talk to me if you just gonna be over there or something like that it just it makes things awkward and weird and it makes me re you know retract <laughs> back in, to myself and be like see that's why i don't talk to people <laughs> that's why i stay to myself because it's it's very hard to talk to people for me, it is. For some people, it just seems like it's so easy. And I admire people like that. Because I just be like, I wish I knew how to talk to people like that. It, it just seemed like they can talk to anybody. And everybody just loved them. And it's just, you know, you know, everything just flow. They always know what the right things to say. Miami over there like... Thinking about it for like 30 minutes before I say it. And still mess up. I be like, oh. <coughs> <coughs> Man, I just can't, you know, I just can't get it right. <laughs> just can't get it right. Mm -mm. So. Starting a business has been hard. Um. I have, I'm kind of close to having my credit so that I can get a business loan. <laughs> That'd be great because then I could probably like get me a space to sew so that I'm not doing it out my house. Maybe get like a, a building or something and sell my stuff in there and sew out the back. I don't know. Do custom sell I don't know. Find me a um a manufacturer where I can just design the stuff. They can mass produce it. I can sell that in the store. And then also like if somebody buys something that's too big or they wanted it fit better, I could do fittings or something, you know. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to work to get there. I want my own store. Um I don't wanna be doing it out my house forever. Um I think that's kinda in this day, I feel like it's kind of dangerous um, with having a kid trying to do stuff out your house. Because, I don't know, sometimes people want to come to, you know, will let you come to their house so you can take measurements and stuff like that. Sometimes they want to just, you know, pop up at your house. <laughs> and I be like... You know, you know, I got a can, but, you know, I don't know. I can't say if it's the money thing, like, who you getting to do your stuff, because, you know, 
you know, nowadays, it don't matter rich or poor. Somebody still would try to sabotage you. You know, it might not even be... I don't know. Some people are just jealous. Jealous that you have the mm to do what you want and to not let nobody stop you from doing it. So they try to sabotage you and that, you know, because of that. So, you know, <laughs> I just want my daughter to be safe. But I also want to be able to do what I love and to provide for her. Um, I don't want anybody to be discouraged from doing a dream or to feel like you can't do it. I am a single mother with not a strong education background. I'm not dumb. I just, you know, when you're not taught certain things, how do you know, you know? Or maybe I just wasn't paying attention in school. <laughs> Who knows? I did sleep a lot in school. Like, I've had depression for a long time. Like, when I was in elementary school, I tried to slit my wrist. But my mom walked in, like, right when I was about to do it. And was like, what you doing? I had this big old butcher knife. Just about to end it. you like, what can you be sad and depressed about elementary school? I don't know. But I was ready to end it. I was ready to end it. And I had to be like around nine. Because my mom was home. So that was around the time she had had her stroke. She had been in the hospital for about five or six months learning to walk and talk and all that stuff. So I had to go live with her aunt while she was in the hospital. And when she got out, you know, I went back home. But I was never, it was like I was never allowed to be a kid. I had to take care of my mom. I had to make sure she was taking her medicine and, you know... It was like she became my child rather than me being her child. And then my sister had a child right out of high school. So that was like my second child, a nine-year-old, looking after her mom and this brand new baby that I knew nothing about how to do. Had changed diapers, fixed hair, put on clothes, feed her, like... You would have thought it was my child. For a long time, she called me mom. And I was like, you got to stop saying that. Like, I'm nine years old. <laughs> People go think I'm a thought, <laughs> you know. But I was like, and plus your mom, she's she going to be sad if she hear you calling me mom. You know, because no mom want to hear they child call somebody else mom. I know... I heard Malia say it, even though she was just playing. It still hurt my heart because it's like, maybe she deep, low-key feel like that because I'm always working and she always around them. So, you know, it just, it hurts. So, you know, I had to tell her about that. But it's been hard. And... To want to change as an adult is even harder. So, but I want it, so I'm going to change. And I'm trying to teach Malia things now so that she don't have to try to relearn as she become an adult. She's already outgoing, so we ain't got to work on the communication skills like mama got to do. Um... I've been built trying to build her her 
her um self esteem so she not like her mama and trying to be confident in herself They say, why you got low self-esteem? I was picked on all my life. I was either too skinny, my nose was too big. <laughs> like, it was always something wrong with me. Or what it seemed like people was always pointing out about me. And it made me have low self-esteem. Not to mention I was raped in high school. That really, that really, like, that really took me on the dark side. Mm. Yeah, but I'm going to make it. The enemy has been trying to stop me so hard, but he ain't gonna stop me. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna set out to be who I know I can be. And as long as I keep God first, he gonna make sure I get there. I hope I have not scared anybody, but encourage them to pursue their dream. You're never too old as long as you're still on this earth and you're still breathing. You still have a chance. Don't give up. Never give up. Never let anybody stand in your way. Because if they're standing in your way, they don't really love you. Because somebody that loves you will support you and have your back. Thank y'all for tuning in. I know I went over my time, but, you know, like I said, sometimes you just keep going and going on certain subjects, and then sometimes you just be like, oh, I got to cut it short today. I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> oh, plus, I got to get back to this jacket. Ugh. I'm making Malia. I got the sleeve on on this side. The little ruffles. I still gotta put the collar on. I'm doing the other sleeve. Like, joining the lining and the outside sleeve on the other side. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna take pictures and everything when I'm done. I'm trying to hurry up and get that finished. Because I gotta also make her costume. She want to be a skeleton. So, I'm gonna be doing videos of me putting that together also. So, thank y'all for tuning in. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Because I know y'all don't have to be here watching me. But y'all do. Y'all my true supporters. I love y'all. I know who is really there for me. And that's y'all. Because y'all be watching. <laughs> and y'all subscribe to my channel. So y'all know every time... My video will pop up like bling bling. <laughs> I'm crazy, y'all. Don't 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 judge me. But I love y'all. See y'all tomorrow. What we only got nine more days, and then we'll be done with the thirty and thirty. But then I'll come back in two days on the twenty six, and I'm gonna do my weigh in. <laughs> I ain't been eating no meat, y'all, but I look like I've been losing some weight up in here. <laughs> but that scale ain't saying that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But we'll see come the 26 how much weight I've lost. And see if there's a doctor out there that can help me. Because right now... I'm losing my faith and my trust in these doctors, for real. For real. That's honest. I'm about... 
I'm about ready to get my passports and go overseas somewhere, go to Canada. <laughs> so um, I need I need to go find doctors that care. Cause here in the United States, they don't care no more. It's all about the money. That's all it's about. If you ain't got that, your life ain't worth. And that's the truth. But see y'all tomorrow. Peace.